Hello, I'm Derek Hildreth. I'm the e-business manager for Technologic Systems and I also write the getting started guides. Uh, so today I'd like to try to do a casual video uh, to accompany the casual getting started guide for the TS7553 V2. Uh, so with that, let's see what we're look, working with here and we'll check out the product webpage. So this is the 7553 V2. Um, it's our, uh, what we're touting as the IoT uh, ready single board computer. Uh, this is for the industrial IoT world and it makes for a really great IoT gateway um, or even an IoT node with all of the different connectors and uh, different sensors that you could hook up to it um, and different interfaces. Uh, so, for example, oh, and then the, uh, the, the wireless communication. So, we have uh, cellular, uh, wireless, Bluetooth, and XB. Um, and we have a lot of different interfaces, including I2C, Spy, RS232, RS45, CAN, etc., um, etc. Et uh, it also has a really cool uh, new feature called the TS Silo which is a supercapacitor solution that will provide 20 to 60 seconds of backup power. Uh, so if the power is abruptly you know, turned off or uh, you go through a power outage, um, Linux file system has a tendency to corrupt um, if you pull the carpet out from underneath it. So what this TS silo does is gives you an opportunity to shut down gracefully uh, should there be a power outage. So that way we can prevent that file system corruption. Um, so that's one of the neater features of this, of this board. Um, and uh, so yeah, anyways, uh, the other thing is uh, we do have full documentation for this. Um, and so if we click in on the manual, we could see that our engineers do a really great job on, pr on populating these manuals with uh, just about everything you need to know about it, uh, including how to work with any of the uh, interfaces here um, or uh, uh, you know getting started and so that's kind of where my or where the getting started guide uh, comes in at uh, it's really just an extrapolation of that manual uh, kind of makes it into a little more casual a uh, little more uh, maybe friendly tone um, to you know help, help you get going with the 7553 V2 quickly uh, and get it to a point where you can take it and start developing. Uh, so let's get started with that. Um, hopefully we'll, we'll kind of mirror this. Um, the first thing we want to do with our board is get a console. Um, so let's let's take a look at the board um, and we'll uh, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll get a we'll get it all hooked up. So here's our board. Uh, you can see that we have it in an enclosure. Uh, this is the uh, LCD on the enclosure, a little black and white LCD, and we have some buttons for some basic HMI, um, human machine interfacing. Um, down below, uh, we have four screws uh, in the corners uh, that actually uh, you know, secure the, the top to the bottom of the enclosure. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the connectors. So we got your power connector, um, your uh, uh, DB9 connector. Uh, this, is, this brings out RS-232, 45, and CAN bus, I do believe. Uh, and we got your Ethernet port, your USB, and a USB device. This is where our serial console is going to come out of. Um, so that's, we gotta, we're going to plug that. We're going to plug um, power serial and ethernet in um, for this getting started guide. So uh, let's do that. I'm going to start by plugging in the serial cable just like that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the ethernet. Okay and finally I'm going to uh, go ahead and power it on. Uh, we do need to set up our terminal uh, to be able to, to read from the serial. Um, I, I like to use, well, let me show you here real quick. Power it on and uh, everything should start, you know, the LEDs will light up. Uh, it'll go green. Um, 
and uh, we should be we should be seeing output on our console now. So let's jump over to the terminal and we will take a look. So this one here happens to show up as slab underscore USB um, device. Uh, let's double check that. So we're going to do a list on dev tty and splat and we can see that it is up in the upper left here tty slab underscore USB to UART. That's our console. So let's get connected to that using Minicom. I want to use Minicom. I want to use the uh, uppercase D for device and I'm going to point it directly to that device. So tty.slab underscore USB to UART. And now we are in the console. If I press enter, we could see the login prompt. Um, let's go ahead and uh, uh, log in here real quick. Um, I'd like to show you the boot up screen. So I'm going to shut down really quick. So let's shut down. And then we will uh, unplug and uh, we'll plug back in here. There we are. So there's our boot up menu. Starting the kernel, and here we are. So this way you can kind of get a sense for how quickly it boots up to. And we're ready. So we're going to log in using root. Um, and, uh, well, usually the first thing we want to do is get it connected to the network somehow. Uh, so that way we might be able to, uh, you know, do things like SSH into it instead of using a serial console. Um, and, uh, well, yeah, of course, that's, uh, um, usually the most important one. So we're going to run ifconfig and, uh, take a look at our interfaces. So we have three interfaces. We have eth0, which is what we have plugged in here. Uh, we have a loopback and we have our wireless network. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, we're not concerned about the wireless network right now. Um, we're, con we're only concerned with E0. So let's just check that one out. And we can see that we have an IP address assigned. Um, this has been dynamically assigned. Um, and the, the way that it's dynamically assigned is through systemd. Uh, and systemd looks at a file within Etsy, systemd, network, and it's called eth, um, eth0.network. So let's take a look at that. And here we can see that we're matching the, the device name of eth0 and we're setting the network settings to use DHCP. Very simple. Uh, this is out of the box. Um, if, as long as an Ethernet cable is plugged in, it should go ahead and try to get an IP address via DHCP. Um, very simple. Uh, not much more to talk about there. We can double check that it can ping something. Let's try to ping Debian.org. And we can see we do have connectivity, so that looks great. Okay, so at this point, uh, I prefer working with SSH. Um, sometimes a console can kind of get in the way. Um, so you would do a, uh, you'd have to associate a password with the root account. Um, you may even have to modify the SSH configuration file to allow for root access. Uh, otherwise, you would just create a new user um, and, uh, and do it that way. So let's take a look at um, well let's take a look at the wireless configuration here. Uh, so we do have a wireless adapter. It's at WLAN zero, um, and you know for the scope of this video, we're not going to go into it in, in too much detail. But let's just say that in previous versions of Debian Linux, um, I've gotten used to using you know, to, to be able to find access points, I've gotten used to using IW list um, to, you know, list out all the access points. Well, here we actually are going to use the newer 
uh, apparently IW list has been more or less like kind of deprecated. IW is a safer, better method to use. So IW dev WLAN zero, uh, and we are going to um, scan. And so let's pipe that through to less. So what we see here, this this can be kind of an overwhelming output. Like there's a lot going on. Uh, really, we're only interested in the SSIDs that we can connect to. So let's let's do a grep for SSID, and there is our uh, access point that we can connect to. Now, in this case, the antenna is on, built into the PCB, uh, so it's not really a very powerful antenna, and I'm fairly far away from my access point, um, so it's not showing up. The only thing that's showing up is my uh, my printer, um, and so I'm not going to connect to that. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so check out the getting started guide. Um, I have all the instructions, all the commands, kind of laid out in there for connecting to the wireless, uh, whether it be an open network, uh, a WEP network, or a WPA network, uh, secured networks. Um, so let's take a look at the uh, let's take a look at the the screen here and the the, the simple HD, HMI. Uh, for that, we have some utilities that we preloaded. Uh, we try to keep everything that is custom in user local bin, and so we could see all the the different uh, files here. Uh, the first thing we actually need to do for uh, the LCD. Uh, and it, actually if we tried, so we need to do LCD helper and if we run that it'll actually say hey I can't find it um, did you forget and yes yes we did forget so let's do mod probe TS ST 7565P dash FB okay so we have inserted the kernel module and now let's go ahead and run the LCD helper. And what we'll notice is the LCD backlight should light up. And there it is. So it did light up. Let's see that. Okay. And now we are going to, uh, let's just do something. Let's try the um, Cairo test. And what this will do is draw a hello world onto the screen. You can see that there. Now I'm holding it upside down, but you can get the you can get the idea. So there it is. Let's try a bounce test. This one here just bounces a shape on the screen. And finally, let's try the keypad test. Okay, so what we have here is uh, whenever we press a button, a block will appear in that in that position. All right. So those are just example codes. Now we uh, obviously you would go ahead and expand upon those. Uh, you could you you know copy paste those, um, use them as a building block uh, to get your application up and running really quick. Um, the uh, the other neat thing about this one is the TS silo and I do have it populated with the TS silo so as you can see here uh, TS silos are right there um, let's uh, the, the the script that is responsible for you know dealing with the TS silo when the power is plugged is again in user local bin and it is called TS silo mon. Uh, so let's take a look at CS, TS user local bin TS silo mon. Okay, so here's our script. Um, we're basically just uh, waiting for uh, for a DIO, um, and we're reading in. We're we're making. We're seeing if there is uh, you know, within um, within a tolerance, and then 
we go ahead and if it does go below that tolerance, we're gonna assume that the power has been lost and we're gonna go ahead and shut down. So that's the command that we run. Otherwise, uh, wait for half a second and try it again. So pretty simple script. Uh, again, you can modify this um, to however you want. Um, but yeah, that's uh, I guess that's really the demo that I had for you. Uh, that was kind of the getting started. Uh, you, basic connections um, and uh, yeah so basic connections and we have uh, you know getting the network up and running uh, we talked about um, you know a couple of the neater features of the 7553v2 such as the uh, HMI uh, the LCD screen there um, and uh, the TS silo um, and uh, for anything else you know feel free to check out the rest of the getting started guide uh, I can add to that if you'd like. Just let me know what you're interested in. Um, and also, definitely check out the manual as well. You want to keep that thing handy. Um, and uh, I guess, you know, again, this is Derek Hildreth. Um, and uh, I'm glad I was able to get show you the 7553 V2. Uh, check out the links below. And uh, see you next time. Thanks. Bye.